Probably need to increase the turn radius of one of these guys so that way they can hit that mark pretty easily. I think it was this guy I had him really high. But uh, aside from that, this is my uh, demonstration of my AI that I've developed. And uh, of course, it wasn't without help. I had uh, help from a tutorial that I found online, and I'll share that in the link at, uh, below the video if you uh, care to watch it. And uh, this is just my AI that, AI that I developed here. They follow a tech behavior tree right here slightly different from the tutorial. Uh, instead of uh, using the move speed here, I just went ahead and made another one for the attacking. That way they can switch in between each other because from what I took, it was a first person shooter AI be behavior tree which required a lot more stuff like walk speed and everything and I had to redevelop those kind of facts. Was uh, I'll show you right here. See, it's a lot more different than before. And uh, <clears throat> had to actually use the mesh only uh, to get the components to work correctly and uh, apply those accordingly. Now I'll go ahead and start with the uh, my AI of course. Pretty simple. Uh, I have of course the stabilize so that way if they get knocked out of their angular velocity they can re be restored if they hit objects and such. And here's my game loop. <clears throat> this just uh, activates all features that are part of the functions. And of course the enemy sound. And here's where I have the event found enemy and event lost enemy like from the tutorial. Uh, all I have them doing is set enemy in range, which would affect my fire weapon right here. So that way it fires weapon when it knows it's in range. And this is just for the turret. I have a mounted turret on the AI right here. As you can see. And it actually does spin around and shoot me. And I just have that as such. Just a simple turret attached to the mesh. Um, not really attached, it's more like... Yeah, it is actually, sorry. But yeah, uh, attached to the mesh and then it just uh, moves on its own. And of course, Everyone knows how to do the fire weapon script. You just socket transform and fire. And then this is my enemy death, which um, I'll display later in another video. I, I could, I could just fly around and let them shoot themselves and blow up. But you saw me blow up. Uh, no, actually you didn't. Let's just go ahead and do that. <laughs> Try guys kill <laughs> to me. Anyways, so, uh, back to where I was. Yes, spot character. Okay, so that would take effect there. <clears throat> and uh, let's just go ahead and pan through this, so that way if you're trying to build something similar with moving AI, you can kind of get it. This is the, obviously, cast about AI and the cast about character, and here's where I pull out the mesh so I can influence that. And of course I pull the variables from the bot character as well. I'm hoping that all my notation kind of makes sense and you guys can see everything clearly. If not, uh, let me know and I can go through a more detailed tutorial in the future. Here we go. I love these blueprints. So easy to share information if you're kind of confused about you know what's going on. You can just show this, and the person's like, "Oh yeah, I get it." Okay. And the other thing is the um, move to enemy. I wanted to get that in there as well, so that way you could see how I did that. Way more complicated than the tutorial video, as you can see. And uh, of course, I just have my identify, and of course, I use the similar um, thing in the tutorial, but it 
it's really different. Like he uses a line trace, I'm using a uh, get distance to to set the range. His is more of a you know it detects the enemy when you have a line trace pointing at the uh, target, and then reflects back and has a hit variable. In this one, I'm using a radar setup, so I'm just going by distance. And then of course you can see I have it set to like 6,000 to pick up enemy and then start search. Not too different from what he had, but you know just using a different method. I believe the guy's name was Peter L. Lewis. Yes, that's right. It finally came to me. Yeah, Peter L. Lewis was the guy that I got my uh, startup tutorial from. Just saving. Sorry if I'm going too fast. I figure you guys can pause the screen and take a look at it more closely. And then down here, it's basically copying some of the movement script from before from my uh, bot moves, move speed here. Just I'm not using the, uh, the rotation. I'm just using the default, what he had right here. This was perfect. It worked. And, uh, yep, just my vertical. Th this is where I did my vertical climb. So if you guys are wondering how to do it, you just get your z-axis and you get the location between both. And then you do this little number right here where you see less than or equal to which to apply uh, force or vector and there you go well, I said force it wasn't really force it's just increasing the vector in that direction and then uh, here's where I would combine the speeds and then of course you got the set speed I know this is a copy I could have just done that but if I did then it wouldn't have run through this loop which was what he created I love this this is so awesome all it does is that it updates the uh, blackboard value into attack mode so that way it'll jump out of this and properly go where it needs to go. And then you're probably wondering, well wait, there's more, right? And I'm like, yes. I also had to mess with the detect enemy script, which is right here. Boom. And this is where I had to, you know, get some work done. You hear my sides because it was so agonizing trying to figure out everything. Now I did this right here, is enemy in stupid range. This is if you're flying right at the enemy, and they're like, whoa, there's someone there. And then this is a uh, radar range, so this will enable the search, this enables the attack. Right here. As you can see, it, it'll flow through, um, down here, sorry. Um, this is where I tried getting his method to work, but as you can see, it just, I mean, I, after, trust me, it just doesn't work. It's got to be a flat line um, where it's not aerial. This is what works. The get distance to and then, you know, getting the radar type right here where that pulls out. That works for me. I mean, if you find another way, let me know because I would love to know. And then this is search, obviously, and enabled uh, chase. Right now, I don't have it enabled. That's why it didn't come after me. If I did have it enabled, I could show you that. There we go. Let me close these because it really puts a lot of frame issue. I don't think it is enabled. Maybe I have to enable it in the tech tree. Let's find out. enabled <clears throat> so that definitely works and uh, let's see back to where I was so that's what happens if you have, if you want chase enabled they'll just come right after you and then one last look at my tech behavior tree to cover anything I think I might have missed yeah like I said I had to do that it's pretty much all the same all the same as the tutorial slightly altered of course
anyways, I'm glad you guys were able to take a look at this. Uh, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. And uh, I'm looking for people to hang out with uh, to play games and such and develop them. So if you're really into developing games, please let me know. I'd like to get involved. And uh, hopefully that helps you guys out with this uh, tutorial. Um, I know it's not much of a tutorial, but if you want me to go more in depth, like I said, just let me know and I'll make a video. Alright, thanks guys.